So if you're a content creator like me, you've probably spent a good amount of time with your trusty Elgato Stream Deck, like this one. But did you know you can use it to control devices that aren't even on your local network? Let me paint a picture for you. I recently started producing a live stream for a church that's about 60 miles away from my house. It's about an hour drive. Now, Sunday mornings, you know, they aren't too bad for driving. But after a few trips, I realized the gas, the mileage, wear and tear. Yeah, it's not ideal, especially for an older car like I have. So I thought, why not try producing this remotely and skip the drive? Seems simple, right? Well, it was until I hit my first hurdle, and that was controlling the PTZ or pan tilt zoom cameras and the rest of the production all at the same time. See, when I'm on location, I've got my stream deck and I've got my joystick and it's easy peasy, but remotely, look, it's like the stuck with the super clunky user interface that was squished into a smallish size frame. And I thought, ah, oh, man, there's gotta be something better. And that's when I discovered companion. Now, if you're not familiar with companion, think of it as a way to control and link your stream deck to other computers and devices on your network. You press a button here on your stream deck and a device over there does something. It responds. It's pretty slick. But what if you could do that remotely from across town, from across the country or across the world? You can with Companion Cloud. Now, as long as both computers are connected to the internet, they can chat with each other using Companion Cloud. It's super cool, especially for remote producers like us. Let me show you an example. Here's the church that I'm producing for remotely. I'm connected via an app called Splashtop Desktop. I've got Ecamm running with a couple of cameras, some scenes, hymn lyrics, and a virtual mixer control. In the corner of the screen, you can see my iPad that's running locally here with Elgato's Virtual Stream Deck app. Now watch as I press the buttons on my iPad right here in front of me, and boom, an hour's drive away, these cameras respond. You know, seriously, this is a game changer. And if you're juggling multiple clients, you can control them all like a production wizard from wherever you are. If you're on vacation, if you're not in your studio, it doesn't matter. You can still do the remote production. All right, so before we get too carried away, let's back up and talk setup. If you've already installed Companion, feel free to skip ahead to where I cover Companion Cloud. But if you're starting from scratch, here's what you need to do. First things first, head over to bitfocus.io and create an account. Now go to the download section and click the experimental version of Companion for your platform. I'm using Intel. And make sure you've got both the latest version on both local and remote computers. Once you've installed it, open up the GUI, graphic user interface, head over to the settings tab and scroll all the way to the bottom to enable cloud you'll see a new cloud tab pop up. Click that, type in your username and password, and a magic code will appear. This is your key, your unique key, to connecting your remote computer to your local one. Now let's go back to the machine that's in front of you, the local computer, and you'll install the cloud module and pop in the secret code from the remote computer. When you see that little green dot light up, you're officially linked. It's that easy. All right, now here's where the fun begins. Button configuration. On the remote computer, you can start installing modules for whatever hardware you're using. PTZ cameras, check. Mixer controls, check. You've got basically all that you need is their IP addresses and port numbers. Little bit of a pro tip here. If you've got somebody that's already setting up all this stuff for you, make sure that they send you a list of IP addresses. And if they've selected, for instance, a lot of cameras work off of port numbers, make sure that they send you the list of port numbers that those cameras are using if they're using non-standard ports. And your IT guys should know all this stuff setting it up. If he doesn't, find a new one. <laughs> so since I've already set everything up, let me show you what mine looks like. 
I've got the two cameras. One's called center cam and the other is called left cam. You can see those right there and you can install as many versions of the same modules you want. You just give them different names. So you can easily tell them apart later. Now let's configure a button. I'm going to show you one button for now, but trust me, I've got a bunch. You saw them once it's set up, it's good to go forever. I'll click on a blank button here and I'm going to select a camera preset and drag preset zero, which by the way, happens to be the home position for the camera into that button blank space. Boom. Done. Now let's go back to my computer in front of me and do the same thing. But in this case, we're going to pull the camera presets from the remote computer using the cloud preset button. Take note of the button's numerical location, which you can easily obtain by clicking onto the button and looking off to the right there. You'll see the location is represented by three numbers separated by a forward slash. After that, we'll move on to the Stream Deck setup. Now, if you've never installed Companion on your Stream Deck before, head over to the Elgato Marketplace and download the Companion button. It works just like any other Stream Deck button or plugin. Once it's installed, all you need to do is drag it into your setup, put in the page, row, and column numbers to match the button you've configured earlier, and then you're golden. And you just repeat this process over and over for every single button that you want to set up on your Stream Deck. So now when you press that button on your Stream Deck, it'll send a signal to the remote computer through the cloud connection. And just like magic, the remote computer will do its thing. Whew. Okay. So <laughs> this is a lot. <laughs> Let's do a quick recap. First, we connect the local and remote computers using companion cloud with unique code. Then we set up modules. There's over 150 of them at the moment. And on the remote computer for the hardware you're controlling, you want to make sure to have those modules set up. Finally, we connect your stream deck buttons to the local computer. And there you have it, your very own remote controlled stream deck, ready to work from anywhere in the world. What's more, you don't even really need a physical or virtual stream deck on the computer. And actually you don't need one on the local one either, but it's so much easier with the stream deck, whether it be virtual or physical. Okay, so that's a lot. Feel free to go back and review, but it's really just a matter of setting up the connection between the two computers and then just start plugging or populating the interface. Right now, Companion Cloud is in free beta, but in the future, there may be a fee. For me, if it's affordable, it's totally worth it for remote productions. The, the money saved on gas alone is worth it. Now I've linked to Companion, the Stream Deck and Splashtop below. If you're looking for other devices, however, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can find them for you. Uh, keep in mind that you can go to the BitFocus website and see all the modules that are available. But once you install it, you'll also see all those modules show up and they're updated on a fairly regular basis. So because Companion is open source, it is constantly being developed for by independent developers essentially for free around the world. It's a really cool app. So I hope you found this tutorial useful and helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to help out. That's what I'm here for. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.